The following teaching is possible thanks to the friends and partners of Spirit and Truth Fellowship International. standing here is in the outer gate of the city. If you go up the road, you go into the inner gate of the city. Now, the, the first thing you ought to know is that when you look at this gate structure, this was all found just like we found it. Um, yeah, now, now this here is a recreation, but these two were, or this one, I guess, this one here was found right where it is. I mean, just like these stones were found, this was the structure in the gate. And you can see, now obviously this has been, this has been recreated to give you an effect on why. You see how this would be a, a place where the, a pole would be set in? And why would you want poles in a canopy like this? Sure, because the, the king is going to get shade. So for example, here's the outer gate of the city. You walk up these, these, this rockway, and again, this rockway is original. The archaeologists did not put this here. You know, years and years and years before Christ, people came in the gate of the city, bowed down to the elders. By the way, there was, there was somebody, remember Mordecai? And he wouldn't bow down to Haman, and Haman was all mad. Mordecai would sit in the king's gate. But you'd say hello to the elders, or you'd say hello to the king, and then you'd pass by. In 2 Samuel 24, we have David, and there was a war between David and his son Absalom, and David is looking for news. And so it says, while David was sitting, while David was sitting between the inner and outer gates. So there's your outer gate right there, and there's your inner gate up there. So it would be in an area, now David wasn't sitting in this city, but it would be a city with a structure very similar to this. While David, so while David was sitting between the inner and outer gate, the watchman went up to the roof of the gateway by the wall, etc., etc. So David was, was just one of those that would sit between the inner and outer gate. In the book of Ruth, Boaz went and sat in the gate. In Deuteronomy, it talks about the judges and the elders would sit where? In the gate. Because if what, what would be the advantage of sitting in the gate? Everybody that's coming and out gets to see you. I mean, it's, it's the place to meet with the people is in the gate of the city. And so it's fascinating that in this wide gate area, and that's one of the reasons that the gate area would be so wide, in this wide gate area they find these ruins from the place where one of the nobles or the king would sit. And of course the, the pillar uh, the pillar base which is would lead up to a canopy and of course they tried to recreate this and they'd, they'd hang cloth from it if it was necessary to keep it shady and so an important person, a king or whatever could sit here in the gate of the city. And again notice what's the advantage of having the gate come straight in? Then you've got to make a turn and it's interesting you're going to make a turn not to your right, you know, you're, you're going to make a turn rather to your, to, your, to your left and not your right. And what's the advantage of that? What it, what it does, if you remember, almost everybody carries their shield on their left arm and their weapon in their right. So when you make your turn to your right, you're exposing the side without the shield to fire. So you want to you want to make gates so they have turns in them in such a way that you continually expose the army and break it up so it can't move together for protection. So you'll notice you'd say gosh, why don't they just come into the city? What whatever, they got doors, isn't that good enough? And the answer is no. I, I want to make sure, are y'all do y'all get the feel for this? Yeah. Okay, good. That's what I wanted you to get. Okay, that's great. Well, we're now in the water tunnel. It, at the town of Megiddo, and you can see this, this is a tunnel, a cut through solid rock that's down many, many feet to the water level, and this was so that the water, the water source, which was outside the city, 
could be covered with stone and stuff and hidden, and then the water itself brought into the city. And we walked through this tunnel quite a ways to get to where the women could actually draw the water. Okay. Hear me? Must be a Muslim hour of prayer. <laughs> okay, to, to, to me, this is one of the most powerful sites in Israel. You saw over there, just 100 yards from here, what it looked like when all the rubble was covering the street and how the archaeologists had to go down pretty far. If you're too far back, come on up. You know, if you're, if you're in the back row and you can't hear me, then, then please move on up or move closer. But did you all get, did you all get that the rubble was covering the street and you couldn't see? And when they move the rubble, what do they find? They find the original street. Now they date that street from the time of Pontius Pilate, but it is the original street. Well, that's what happened here. When you look up that wall that's right behind us, up, you know, it went way considerably up, and then right above it was the Royal Stoa with all that rock. When I first came here in 1977, this whole area was completely covered with rubble. It simply didn't exist. I mean, it existed, but it was underneath just huge amounts of dirt. And there were trees and grass and, and weeds and all kinds of things growing on it. When the Romans destroyed Jerusalem in 70 AD and pushed the, uh, the rock and things onto these steps, it protected the steps. So then when, when they uncovered these steps, they get back and you can tell. Now some of it's reconstruction, if you take a look over here, you can see that some of it's reconstruction. But most of you are sitting on what's left of the original steps. Now, when we say, you know, Christ was crucified somewhere near the top of the Mount of Olives, the Garden of Gethsemane was somewhere on the, the, on the bottom of the west slope of the Mount of Olives. There's been a lot of places where we've gone where Christ is within 100 yards of here or this or that or the other thing. But I guarantee you in Christ's life, he walked up and down these steps. I guarantee it. Because this was the main entrance to the temple. Now in this area here, there are just, they've excavated hundreds of mikvahs because you didn't want to go into the temple if you were ceremonially, un ceremonially unclean. So what would you do before you entered the temple? You take a ceremonial bath. How many thousands of people are going to go into the temple? Thousands and thousands. So if you have one mikvah, you're never going to get in. <laughs> so this, this whole hillside, and you'll see it if you take a second and walk around, but this whole hillside is covered with cisterns and mikvahs so that huge crowds could all take ritual baths and all you had to do was just walk in and walk out. You know, it wasn't like a bathroom break or anything, you just walk in and walk out. But this, this whole area had enough mikvahs that thousands and thousands of people could, could walk into the water, come up and go, and, and go up these steps very, very uh, quickly. Also, there were entryways. You can see the, the remains of one in the, in the wall over there that would not be from the time of Christ. But you see the triple archway. You saw other archways. But the, um, the idea was that you had a, a way to go in and a, and a different way to go out, one way. Why would you want one way? Well, yeah, crowds, but more than that, the, the people that were going in you know, they were, they were clean, but after, they were ceremonial clean, but after you'd been on the Temple Mount, you, you know, you were like ceremonially shining. <laughs> if you can ceremonially shine, they were. So the people walking out didn't want to have contact with the people that had not been in yet. So they had the walking in gates and the walking out gates, just like we saw in the mikvahs that we, we saw in some of the other places. You had your steps going down and your steps going up. Now, one of the things that's interesting about these steps, if you look, and you can just see just by looking over to your, to your uh, immediate left here, my right, you'll notice that some of the steps are very long, where it'll take two steps to get to the next step. Some of them are very, very short. 
and the pattern is completely uneven. It's an uneven pattern that goes to the top. Now that makes walking up it very difficult. You'll notice if you, if you start as far down as you can and then just walk up to the top, what you'll notice is you can't get a pace. You can't get a stride. You, and the, the, that's made a purpose. The, you're not supposed to be thinking of anything but God when you enter the temple. They don't want you daydreaming, thinking about your kids, thinking about your house, you're walking along. You're, you're gonna have to pay attention to get into the temple without falling on your face. And so the steps were made very unevenly in length and to some degree even in height, just so that people would realize, I'm going into the temple now, this is where my thoughts are gonna be. It's kind of interesting. I, I wonder how many people would fall if we built our churches this way. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not a bad idea to be able to get people to focus on, on, the, on the thing that they're going to do. It's like if you don't want to think about God, if you don't want to talk about God, if you don't want to be in the Spirit, then don't come. Stay home. Leave your unrenewed mind home. Leave your problems at home. Leave this, leave that. You know, this is a time for worship on, in, you know, in the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, loving God. That's what this is all about. So, I, I, you know, I'm, I aware, I'm aware of the heat, but I'm also aware of the time frame. I want you to have time to experience this. I think your experience of this will be more powerful than my teaching of this. I love this place. I really do. One more thing that comes up for me, and that is that right now it's a ruins, and it's a ruins because the Messiah was rejected. And in that sense, it's kind of a picture of what happens to people who reject the Messiah. You have a choice. You can move forward into glory, or you can be forgotten and buried and become a ruins. Interesting thing to think about. Let's just take some time. Please start at the bottom and walk to the top. You'll never forget the experience. <laughs>